three kinds of preachers you should never sit under. If you want God to write his law in your heart. Number one, don't sit under false preachers. Preachers working in falsehood. Don't sit under them. Two, don't sit under preachers who are not called. Preachers that are false, don't sit under them. Preachers that are not called of God, don't sit under them. Number three, don't sit under expired preachers. Who are expired preachers? Preachers that have lost their calling. How do you know a preacher who have lost his calling? They have lost their consecration. When a preacher loses his hair, his consecration, he's already in the hands of Delilah. He'll be swimming in sexual immorality and be saying we are all humans. Oh, I hope I'm talking to somebody tonight. When a preacher has expired, they lose their hair. Samson lost his hair. And he will now find himself in the house of Delilah. Every preacher in the house of Delilah will not just be involved with one woman, multiple women. You see, today we have preachers that have children from so many women. And they are still pastoring. They still have crowds under them. They are in their hands. Those people under them are, are in the hands of expired preachers. The, the expired prophet, the old prophet in 1 Kings 13 was the one that killed the young prophet. That's why you see every expired preacher anoint youth to become pastors or to become leaders. Because the agenda of an old prophet is to destroy the young prophet. Check expired preachers. They surround themselves with young youth, with youth that have strong call of God upon their lives. Youth that are highly gifted. They surround them, themselves with those youth. Because the agenda of the expired is to destroy the upcoming. I wish I'm talking to somebody tonight. I'm showing you a major grand plan of Satan against the youth today. Uh, do you know why the youth are falling into it? Because the youth want attention. I saw one 23 year old boy who is pastoring. It's because of his arrogance. I will have told him, as you leave my office now, go and close that thing and come and sit down here and be raised. But they don't listen. The arrogance, because you can wear one suit and you look so handsome, then you are not a pastor. Stupid. Because we are all looking for, youth are looking for attention. Every, when I was a youth, I was looking for attention. When I was a little teenager, 20 something, I, 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 I was looking for a puppy to preach. Thank God how God knocked me off from those things. Because I would, have been, I would have been out of the way today. I would have been among one of those lying prophets. If I should tell, the group of preachers <laughs> that the pastor who is asking people to the, the apostle, I think they call him apostle, with brain miracle money. His friends, one of them, I won't mention his name, came to me in the 90s and said I should come and join their group. This pastor was one of the groups, the, the apostle. The money alert. He said I should come and join. I, st I still have his card that he gave me in the 90s. Then, they were all little boys. They were going around looking for expression. They were, we were all the same mates. He came to Abuja. Somebody in Abuja connected me to him. I said, oh, let's come. He met me. Come, let's form a group and be going about as prophets and prophesying. I told him, I'm sorry. I'm not part of that group. That, look at them today. Miracle alert. Listen, if you're a youth, don't stay around expired preachers. False preachers are those who are just sent of the devil to do his assignment. They produce miracles. Why are they false? The source of their wonders is not from the kingdom of God. They look more called than those who are called. Like, for instance, the 400 prophets of Baal look more prophetic than Elijah himself. Do that 400 prophets of Baal that um, Ahab gathered himself around look more prophetic than Micaiah. So the false are always enchanting. They are attractive. In fact, when a false prophet and a true prophet stands and God tells you, go and meet my servant, 
you will first of all go to the falls because he looked more servant of God. He looked more servant of God than the true servants of God. Every false servant of God look more of a servant of God. Number one, because for us today, do you know who we call servants of God? They have a convoy of cars. They have a big suit. They have Italian suit. They have golden wristwatch. They have a necklace. They have shining shoes. They have an entourage of armor bearers. Before they arrive, the armor bearers will arrive first. So, so a church of 30 members, 15 are the armor bearers. And they have pastors under them. Pastors. A church of 500 people have about 20 pastors. <laughs> Shege. They look more man of God. So they have chains of uh, uh, the complimentary card, briefcase, uh, phones, uh, 200 phones. This one, yeah. This one is answering this phone. This one is answering this phone. That one is carrying his handkerchief. That one is carrying his shoes. You get my point. You see? You see? When you call them, the call have to go through one secretary to another secretary to another before it gets to them. They look more man of God. And the stupidity of our generation, when, when to them, a man of God is he that when you call him, he doesn't pick. And that person will pick the call and book an appointment for you. Do you know how many people that I have shocked them? Once they call me, is that person talking? Yes, the person will begin to shake. I told you, second, second word, second word. Our generation does not like men of God. They don't like genuine men of God. They like the first one. They like those that have art artifacts of those exterior, exterior things. Uh, we call it, uh, how do we call it? Complicated stuff around with, with digital things around. The, the person is always in Bible to preach. He used iPads. He used a little phone like this. That is a man of God for you. He comes like this with this phone. The Bible says, and his accent is Americanized. That is man of God for you. For our generation. So the false one look more man of God than the true man of God. Because our generation does not like humility. We love the pride of life. We love, we love egotists. People full of ego. We want those that whose names have a lot of titles. Apostle, Professor, Dr. Richard Takim. BSc, um, sorry, um, BSc, MSc, PhD, PPAN. <laughs> so you begin to look for the name. You can't find the name. The titles are too much. That is what we want. You know why? Satan knows the heart of men. The Bible says men look at outward appearance. So Satan will feed the eyes of the people so that this, he will satisfy the cravings of the people, the expectation of the people. Somebody said to me that when she came to the church some years back, that she, and uh, she never knew that I was the pastor in charge. I sat down there. I was getting ready. She thought I was the PA. Because we have been built up we have been given how a man of God should look like. That is why the false men have more crowds than the true men because men love, look at the outward appearance. They don't listen to the spirit. And, and these false men of God know how to take care of their outward appearance to look so man of God than the, the men of God. So, but look at how God exposes them. He will make sure that no moral code of his kingdom is written in your heart when you sit under them. The Bible says that children of Israel without understanding the time that you are in. The Bible says they are saying that when you see them, you will know that the curtain is about being closed. And the signs are here. The signs are around us. It is in the church. It is outside the church. It is outside the church. Any moment from now, the curtain of life shall be drawn. It is outside. Listen. If you are if if you are doubting before, listen. If you are doubting about the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, look around. Even look inside the church. Inside the church and critically assess and analyze what happens in the church. It will quickly tell you the Lord is at the door. He knew the time is the time when many people will come in the name of the Lord and deceive people. Many false prophets. Do you know that today native doctors are taking over some pulpits? Native doctors. It's a sign of the injury time. Men who are drunk 
with a love for money. People whose chapter of ministry is about getting money, a piece of paper with somebody's signature plus photographs of some dead men. I have a prayer for a listener tonight that the Lord will exempt you from being a victim of the injury time. I have, I, have, I have a prayer for you that if there be any wounded people still standing to teach Sunday school. Papa, let me never, never end my journey halfway. Until I reach Injury time is a time when men who rejected alcohol in the past now have alcohol in their fridges. Look at you. By the time God had not blessed you, you were sleeping in the church. By the time God had not blessed you, you were humble before the Lord. By the time God has not blessed you, you were satisfied with fruits. Fruit drinks. But now, God has made you a millionaire, billionaire. You are now too big. Injury time is a time when many people become dogs going back to their vomit. Going back to their vomit. Some church members have gone back to their vomit. Things they hated in the past, they have gone back to them. Things their consciences have heard, they have gone back to them. Such a person can still be answering a Christian. I am born again. I see people moving from godliness to drunk, godliness to drunkenness. That somebody can drink alcohol and perform in this stage. But do you know my worry? Somebody can drink alcohol and perform on this stage. The people's hearts shall be lifted. They shall be catapulted to the Santum Santorum. But the person will only be a funnel. Funnel that will be used and dropped at last. Listen to me tonight. God can use any nonsense person. God can use any criminal. Because I read in the Bible that God used an axe to speak to Balaam. And I asked myself three questions. Number one, was that axe born again? No, the donkey was not born again. Number two, did the donkey receive the Holy Ghost? No, the donkey did not receive the Holy Ghost. But number three, did God use the donkey? Yes, God used the donkey. Relationship with God is more important than what God uses me to do. God can decide to use anybody to perform a particular thing and push the person aside. Papa, don't use me and abandon me. Don't, 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 don't use me and abandon me. People shall be lovers of pleasure. Lovers of pleasure. Lovers of pleasure. Injury time is a time when there is a surge, surge of immorality. When those who have heard 
In Christian ethics, listen to me tonight. In Christian ethics, the Christianity we saw, the Christianity we experienced, a young girl has no relationship with an intended husband till they go to the altar and declare, I do. But today, how many have we joined under pregnancy? This is a generation of intelligent sinners. A generation of intelligent sinners. They know how to commit abomination needs in a neat formula. Nobody will discover. But I know, even from the altar, there's a declaration. There shall come when the secret of every heart shall be revealed. Church, listen. The pastor is not the final judge. Otherwise, he would have given you direct visa to heaven because of the Christmas gift of last year. It is not the committee who decides who goes to heaven. They would have given you direct, said, Oh, this brother, they would have written for your tight record. Even if you shed innocent blood to pay tight, you are a faithful brother. Even if you are a criminal. Listen to me tonight. It's a night of deliverance. A night when God shall set free men and women that are victims of the injury time. On this platform tonight, restoration. On this platform tonight, there shall be revival. On this platform tonight, there shall be freedom. Somebody must come up and declare. Lord, for the past 10 years, I have been a victim of the injury time. I still come to church and feel alright, feel groovy. But I have become a victim. I'm a dog. God, I'm a dog. Nobody knows, but I'm a dog. I returned to my vomit 10 years ago. I returned to my vomit 7 years ago. I returned to my vomit 5 years ago. I returned to my vomit. Those who clap for you are not the final job. What is your relationship? Are we beginning to have men who multiply women and wives after themselves? Just like one of the things we read in the Islam, in the Islamic a course in Islam. They said, you are empowered to hire a wife to make a journey. But there are people who are beginning to practice that. You hire. But later, let me say, in the darkest, the dark is the invisible. Thank you so much, Apostle Richard Takim and Reverend Dr. Chido Karafo. God bless you guys. More grace for greater manifestation. It shall be well within the morning. It shall be well within the afternoon. It shall be well within the evening. Whatever good thing you lay your hand shall prosper. This message is for those that really want to learn. Come out from them. Don't join them. Pastors you must run away from. Number one, my own. Let me just give you three because I already said it all. So I don't need to add anything. But let me just give you some more. You see that man of God. They are normally tell you to sow seed. So that God will bless you. Tap. You have to tap anointing. Tap bless, blessing. Tap grace. You see that man of God that is pointing you to himself. Instead of, it, instead of pointing you to Christ. Please. Mark and avoid. I'm telling you, you see that man of God that whenever he is preaching, either he remember one of his, he will tell story of his father in the Lord. How his father in the Lord uh, want to do this. And uh, he, this and that. He will lie. Yeah, you know that that thing is all about what he did and what his father in the Lord did. All those things is just lie. Child of God, mark and suspect. That type of person, you have to suspect the person, not to avoid it yet. But you have to suspect. The, yeah, I'm suspecting you. Because a man of God is supposed to be pointing you to himself. Everything is eh, eh, my testimony. What I went, when I went to England, England, when I went to UK, when I went to Germany, when I went to America. Hey, the program. A lady just came. And they you know I have thunderous voices. 
I'm telling you, then I might have tolerance verses. Then, hey, hey, lady came. I just spoke a word and she got her blessing. And he normally end that story, nonsense Yahoo story with giving. He meant she so seed. She so seed to my life. It's not like I prayed for her, she got her healing, and she now gave thanks. No, but she so seed. I now provoke God with that seed. You see that kind of preaching? <laughs> <laughs> is, it, is it that type of pastor? My brother, Mark and the suspect. Okay? Just be suspecting that type. You see this type that normally give you guys something to drink for prosperity. Those ones, Mark and avoid. <laughs> you see those ones? Then I want to tell you that your mother is the cause of your problem. Every day you go to church, you must prophesy. Prophecy, prophecy, prophecy. Those ones that makes it to look as if Christianity is all about prophecy. And that prophecy is power, according to them. Now, it's pro- because we like prophecy, we like people that are Yahuwah. <laughs> Anytime you see you prophecy, can I prophesy? Pro, pro, pro. Please, mark and run. Flee, in fact, you don't need to run. That one. <laughs> Those ones that are using prophecy to manipulate people, please mark and flee. Okay, yes, you see that one. My hey, your mother is the cause of your problem. Every time you go to church, something must be cause of your problem. If you are poor, something is cause of your problem. But if you are okay, if nothing is happening to you, you say yes, you will cook one thing. Some, somebody is about to, to, to take your life. <laughs> You see that type? Tell of God, Mark and the flea. Okay? <laughs> you see that type of, those type of man of God? <laughs> that type that nobody can... <laughs> those type that, that type that nobody tell you to come to my office. You must do sacrifice. You have to go to your family, family altar. To go and uh, whatever, whatever. Come to my office, you pay bill. We are praying for you. Those ones that make themselves prayer warriors for sale, that has prayer warriors that you have to pay, then they will pray for you. Now, after the prayer, you pay the remaining balance. You see that, and the, the, the prayer warriors will be fasting for you. You see those type, child of God, mark and avoid. Okay? Yes. Now, which one do I accept as a child of God? Number one, you see that one of God, then I'm tell you to repent. If you do not rep- in fact, you, you, you hate his preaching because he normally tell you the truth. You see that one? Mark and accept. That one I normally point you to Christ instead of pointing you to himself. That humble man of God. He may not have money, he may not have plenty of returning or members, but he's still preaching Jesus. Is he telling you to repent? Is he telling you don't give don't give up? Give you hope where there is hope, hopeless. Okay, in times of hopeless, he give you hope, encourage you in Christ. He teach you how to know Christ. You see that man of God that is teaching you how to know Christ by yourself, for yourself, know Jesus for yourself. Please mark and accept. You see that man of God that normally tell you that your mother is the cause of your problem. Your mother in law, you are barren because your mother in law tie your womb. Everybody tie something, tie, tie, tie. Your family members they are evil. They are demon. They are this and that. They don't want your progress. They are after your life. Child of God, mark and avoid. Okay? Now let's continue with the ones to accept. You see that man of God that people hate so much on social media because of the truth. He talk and uh, talk and talk. Stop this. This is antichrist. This is falsehood. He don't do that. He don't do that. That apostle because those people, they normally have apostolic mantle. Because apostolic mantle is a mantle that normally rebuke somebody. Rebuke you or rebuke a Christian. Irrespective of who is involved. Anything evil, you say no to it. Irrespective of who is involved. Not minding what you will gain or what you will lose. You don't care. You see that type of human being. And they normally have bitterness and very angry. They are always very angry with falsehood. That is their calling, speaking. Please don't blame them. Don't hate them because of that. Okay? It's their calling that is speaking through them. They are calling hate wickedness. They are calling hate evil. They are calling don't, have, don't, want, don't like to see anything that is not right in the body of Christ. 
That is why you see them speaking. They will normally speak out. They can never hide it. It's their calling that is disturbing them. Please don't hate that pastor. Mark and accept. Okay? Don't hate him. Don't, although some of them at times they will go, they will go extra as in that anger, that they will not control that anger of that uh, falsehood. The thing will just turn as if uh, uh, you hate this man of God, this and that. They will do something that you know that this thing is not right. But because you're not supposed to handle it that way, not like it's not right, but they're not supposed to handle it that way. But because of their calling, their call, the gift of God in their life makes them to react like that. Please don't hate that man of God. Anybody that is telling you to repent, that is rebuking you when you are doing evil, Jesus of God is supposed to know that that person loves you. Anybody that doesn't love you, they don't want you to go to heaven. That is all about hell, 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 the hell. Oh my God. That is telling you everything is all right. You don't need to just relax. You're saying everything is normal. He can fornicate, it's okay. He can steal, it's okay. Please, just God has taken everything you're saying away, saying away. You don't need to disturb yourself. And when they want to do this in wickedness, they will use coded English. Coded English. If you think, and they will have one thunderous voice. Please, run away from such person. I'm telling you, run away from such, such preacher. Okay? So, please, child of God, as I promise you guys this year, I'll be bringing genuine men of God's messages so that we can be blessed. Because I have promoted so much, I have, as I said, could promote, I have expose falsehood so much. You now lose as if falsehood and now they are now they are, they are getting gra- getting ground. The more you expose them, the more people they they get they get followers. The more you expose them, the more because we don't like genuine ones again. We don't want to hear the truth again. We like Yahoo. That is why they keep giving us that Yahoo. And we like following such Yahoo. If you expose this man of God, if that one has 30,000 30, followers before, if you expose that one. Just go in the next two to three days. Just go there. You see what? Uh, 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 200,000 or 150,000 followers. You say, well, why do people now follow this kind of thing? After this, my exposure. That is to show you that they are not actual. Uh, they follow this person because they, that is what they like. That is what they like. And if you now go there to see, do they just follow him because of your exposure? Or maybe they just want to go and know whether you, what you say is true. You see, no. You now find out that they are not following him because of that. They are actually following him because they like that falsehood. Because if you go there on the comment section, you still see such people commenting, Amen, I receive it, I receive it. That means that is what they like. <laughs> now, that is what the Bible says, book of Timothy. Timothy says that end time, people will not like to hear sound doctrine. They will gather themselves false apostles, false prophets, they will be telling them what they want to hear. So I now find out that that is what they are doing, and I say, "Oh, I think I'm even actually promoting these people in another." In a <laughs> Meanwhile, my intention is to tell you to beware of them, just like Bible said in Matthew seven fifteen. He said, "Beware of false prophets who come to in sheep clothing." So, child of God, please let's know God for ourselves. Okay, the best thing any man can give to you is to give you Jesus. Any but and any pastor that offer you Christ, love you. Don't forget. A man that is a man will take you where he's going to. No man will take you where he's not going to. A false prophet knows that he's not going to heaven. And wherever he's going to, you will go with him because you are following him. Please mark and avoid falsehood. False prophets they are dangerous. I'm telling you, they are dangerous. They have destroyed a lot of families today. A lot of families marriages are in crisis because of false prophets. So we must not joke with that. That is why Bible says, beware of false prophet. So beware of false prophet is a warning statement. It's not a statement of joke. No, it's not something you can just say. Hey. No, it's not. No, don't join them. That is what Bible says to do what? Don't join them. Ephesians 5, 11 says, rather expose them. Apostle Richard Takin's church is in Kenya. If you're in Nairobi, Kenya, can you join, join him and serve Jenu God there? Okay. Join him if God lay your hands to support him anytime, anything, anything you feel like. Please, you can see his number is there, uh, the contact information is there. You can check him out on Facebook at Pastor Apostle uh, Richard Takim Apostle. Okay, check them out on Facebook, check them out on YouTube as well. Okay, support him, support him so that he can, can do this work, support him financially. 
please is not it, information is here kindly contact them support them financially the gospel is free but the means to take it is not free okay it's not free you can see people don't like you to go to this kind of church because we don't like truth please kindly support our brother so that he can serve this god effectively thank you guys for listening we we'll love you guys bye <laughs>